What is up, Janksters? It's your boy, Graham, also known as HamHawks42 on the internet, and today we have a fun, historic deck that was actually a challenge on my stream. Uh, my buddy Lunaria challenged me to build this deck, so huge shout-outs there. Um, the challenge was to build a deck where every single card in it was a shrine. Now, at first, I thought that meant that I needed to include all of the Sanctums, the Hondans, the Goshintai, and that's true. That was part of it. However, the challenge actually went further than that. Even the lands are all shrines. Now, I know what you're thinking. There's no way you can do shrines as basic lands. But we were actually able to find basic lands that had shrines in them. So we did. So at the end of the day, this deck is 100% shrines. All shrines, all the time, only shrines. That is all we're doing today. Uh, so we have... All the Sanctums, all the Hondins, and all the Goshintai. That's actually very, very important. Those cards are just amazing. And they feed off each other, which is pretty darn cool. So we have cards like the Sanctum of Tranquil Light is one of. Goshintai of Lost Wisdom. Um, oh, also, every single Shrine card, every single card that has the Enchantment type Shrine is represented within the deck. This deck is also available for best of three. It does, in fact, have a sideboard. Now, the sideboard is all of the Goshintai and Hondins that we don't have in the main deck that may be better against certain matchups. Um, but let's let's dive into that and let's talk it through a little bit. So we have three Sanctum of Stone Fangs as a key uh, win con. The Shrines do everything. So it's really, really easy to build a shrine deck, believe it or not. Now, it seems like kind of a meme, but it can be done, and this can be fairly effective. Um, is this going to be like a tier one competitive deck? Not necessarily. Are you going to shatter some dreams in the play queue with this thing? 100%. Um, or... You can have some fun in the rank queues if you're, especially in the lower ranks, you can have some really good times. Um, and it does have a positive, or it has at least, I believe it's broken even for me so far, but it's not bad. But let's get into what the different shrines do. So Sanctum of Stone Fangs is a win condition. It drains our opponent and heals us. So it keeps us alive against aggro strategies and it also is gonna hurt our opponent. Love it. Other win conditions, Honda of Infinite Rage deals direct damage uh, to anything. Uh, so this is a great way to remove our remove uh, creatures as well as remove our opponents from the game. Um, the Goshintai of Ancient Wars is also capable of dealing direct damage to opponents at the end step based on how much damage, or based on the number of shrines that are available. So we can do a lot of damage directly to our opponent's face as long as we have a couple mana lying around. Not a problem. Um, other other win cons in the deck, well, that's about it with the exception of Goshintai of Boundless Vigor. So Goshintai of Boundless Vigor gets a plus one, plus one counter on target shrine for each shrine you control. That means this guy can become huge pretty darn fast. We can also go wide with the Goshintai of Shared Purpose, which by creating one, one spirits for each shrine we control. So that's another option. The main, um, and Honda of Life's Web is capable of going wide, but it's just so slow. As a five drop, and it creates the, the, the tokens on the upkeep. It's important to note with the shrines, the shrines come in three different flavors. We have the Hondins. These are the original shrines. All Hondins are a little bit expensive, and they all trigger on your upkeep. That is very, very important. In M21, I believe it was, yes, M21, they introduced the Sanctums. This is, an, this is the next flavor of shrine where all the shrines trigger... Well, Sanctum of All is a special one. This is a five-color shrine. It is one of a kind. Nothing is like it. That's why there are four in this deck. It's a very important key piece. It's the engine that ties this whole thing together. We need this card if we're if the deck is really going to pop off. The deck can win without it, but man, it's hard. Um, whereas if we can stick the Sanctum of All, golden. We can do a lot of great things. Sanctum of All states, at the beginning of your upkeep, you may search the library and or graveyard for a shrine card, put it onto the battlefield. Great. Um, if you search your library this way, shuffle. If an ability of another shrine you control triggers while you control six or more shrines, which is not going to be hard in this deck, as you can imagine, that ability triggers an additional time. Now, Sanctum of All was released into an environment where the Hondans didn't exist and the Goshintai hadn't been printed yet. So six or more shrines meant all of the Sanctums. Um, another So that was very difficult to pull off at one time. Now it's just not. I mean, the Hondans had been around, but they hadn't, I don't believe they had been introduced on Arena yet. I could be mistaken about that. Uh, or no, 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 they had been around. My bad. Don't, don't forget what I'm saying. Hondans were around in Historic, but they weren't available in Standard at the same time as Sanctum of All. So the six six shrines, um, it was harder to, harder to pull off at one time. Nowadays, no, no trouble at all. So those are the two flavors of, of shrines that we have. So we have the Hondans and the, and the Sanctums. Um, 
The other interesting thing to note about Sanctum of All, it fetches on the upkeep. Other Sanctums, such as the Sanctum of Calm Waters here, triggers at the pre-combat main phase, which means if you pull a Sanctum with, so if Sanctum of All fetches up a Sanctum Shrine and puts it onto the battlefield, you do get that trigger the same turn. That's very, very important. You will also get the triggers for the Goshintai, but you will not get the triggers for the Hondans because the Hondans trigger on upkeep. That's important to note. Now the Goshintai, trigger at the end step but you do need to have mana to spend on the effects so you kind of have a choice um during the turn do i want to tap out to put more shrines into play or do i want to hold back and get the ability of my goshintai so that's important to keep in mind when you're working with the goshintai of ancient war or the goshintai of shared purpose it's important to keep in mind do i need to um do I need to create blockers? In which case, the shared purpose can create that very, very, very nicely. Keeping one man up is very, very good for that. And that's the typical use case for that particular card. Uh, with Goshin Dive Ancient War, um, if you're racing, if you're racing your opponent, you really got to look at like how many turn, how much of a clock does this put them on and how important is that mana spent that way? Um, you notice some of the other ones, like uh, Goshin Dive Violence Vigor, same thing. Uh, at the end of the day, we need we need to see how important are these counters. Uh, Goshin Dive Lost Wisdom, this is a 0-4 block, 0-4 flying blocker for two. This is a defensive creature. Keep that in mind. That's and, and it counts as a shrine. That is the primary use for this card. Uh, it is not a particularly good ability. It it mills where X is the number of shrines you control. While someday I want to build a deck around getting a ton of shrines and milling my opponent out with this, that's really not its primary purpose. Um, this is going to be good against, like, if a deck is, re like, milling itself um, in in Historic, there's a good, like, the Delirium decks or something like that, you could potentially use this as a win con, but in all likelihood, this is a 0-4 blocker. This is going to be good against aggro, which is why there are three in the sideboard, um, because it's a good blocker. Also, because it's a flyer, the Sanctum of Boundless Vigor, or the Goshintai of Boundless Vigor, works with it very, very nicely by being able to buff it into a very large body that your opponent now has to deal with in one way or another very very useful and that could be a win count in its own right uh, those two get together and do some cool things uh, but at the end of the day the goshintai have lost wisdom uh, its effect isn't particularly good and so there's only one in the main but if you're going up against aggro feel free to slot more in it's, it's pretty darn good um, so yeah, um, as far as removal goes, that's another key piece. We need to be able to eliminate our opponent's creatures because that them applying pressure to us is going to be a huge issue. Um, Sanctum of Shattered Heights does it better than anybody. Uh, it is a shrine that where you can pay one, discard a land card or shrine card, which if we have any of the blue shrines down, we're going to be drawing plenty of cards. So Sanctum of Shattered Heights basically says pay one, discard a card in this deck because it's almost any card. Um, target creature or plane, uh, and then it deals X damage target creature or planeswalker or X is the number of shrines you control. Just blast them out of the water. It's pretty great. We also have the Goshintai of Hidden Cruelty. It is a 2-2 death touch creature for four, which is pretty good on its own because that's going to prevent your opponent from attacking into it in a lot of situations unless they're going super aggressive, which is not uncommon, but at the very least it can trade with the creature in combat, which is nice. Or, at the beginning of your end step, you may pay one if you do destroy a target creature with toughness X or less, where X is the number of shrines you control. So it's a great way to just pick off a pesky blocker or a threat that is going to wreck you uh, throughout the course of the game. Also, this is historic. Goshin Dive Hidden Cruelty goes, does a great job of picking off uh, Bone Crusher Giant. Just throwing that out there, because that's still all over the place. So, yeah, Goshin Dive Hidden Cruelty, very useful card. It does cost four to drop, so you can't really count on it too much. However, it's a good one to pick up with the Sanctum of All. Uh, because you can then pick it up, get a 2-2 Death Toucher on board, and then at the end step, if you have mana lying around, just ping something down. Pretty darn useful. I like it a lot. Honda of Knight's Reach is kind of out of place. It is not a particularly good card. Um, it is a 4-drop at the beginning of your upkeep. Target opponent discards a card for each shrine you control. This has been my least favorite shrine since Jump. Since the OG Kamigawa. Back in Saviors of Kamigawa, when this card first came out, I remember thinking, it's just not very good. Because by the time you have it down, unless your opponent is drawing a ton of cards each turn... They're probably going to be running out of gas anyway, and so you're not going to get much value out of this. Um, but if you're going against a control player who's drawing a lot of cards, all of a sudden that might be valuable. Being able to pick off their hand each turn is pretty good. And as a result, there are two in the sideboard. So I figured there might be a—or no, sorry, there are three in the sideboard. There might be a, a, a situation where that's where that uh, merits consideration. There's one other card in here that you may have noticed um, that— doesn't necessarily fit the rest 
because I did say everything in here was a shrine. Everything's a shrine or a temple. You'll notice our land, our mana base. We have shrines, in, shrine artworks uh, for all of our for all of our basic land, um, and we also have the temple cycle. Because what is what is a temple if not a shrine? Um, so we have the temple cycle, and the world tree is a divine tree. So my buddy Luna gave me a pass on that one because it like. It is, it is, if not a shrine to itself that holds up the, the nine or the 10 realms of uh, call time. So um, we also have the Temple of the Dragon Queen because this is a temple that can produce any color of mana. Um, we have to pick one as it enters the battlefield, but it's totally worth it. But Chromatic Lantern, you'll notice this is not in fact a shrine. However, I challenge you to look closely at the artwork for Chromatic Lantern. It's totally inside some kind of cathedral or temple. So as a result, this is an object that one would find within a shrine. Therefore, it got the pass as well. And it's a very important piece because we are juggling five colors with a suboptimal mana base. So because we are going theme above function here. And so Chromatic Lantern is a very important three drop. Also, it ramps us so that it's more it's uh, so that we can easily hit the Goshintai triggers because that's very, very important. Uh, Sanctum of Fruitful Harvest will also help us with that. But yeah, so that's the deck. Let's take this thing out onto the historic ladder and see if we can't string some wins together with it. It might be a meme, it might be a dream. I don't know. Let's go and find out. All right, we got Sanctum of All, the Chromatic Lantern. We don't have the ability to play the Chromatic Lantern on three, so this is kind of a sketch hand. Let's keep it and see what we can do, though. Worst case scenario, our opponent out aggroes us and we just don't get an opportunity to show them what we're doing. But to be honest, I could do worse than that. Temple of Epiphany into a Temple of Mystery. I'm gonna let that go, actually. Because we're doing fine on lands. Another Temple of Mystery. Sure, fine, whatever. And the Temple of Silence. Don't need another Sanctum of All. We got plenty of those. I've noticed Sanctum of, Sanctums of All tend to come in groups. Don't know what the deal is with that. So next turn, we're going to play out the Chromatic Sphere. Strict Proctor. Entering the battlefield causes trigger. Okay, that's actually fine because our stuff doesn't trigger by entering, but they do get a lotus field, so they're ramping like crazy off that. Don't love that. Don't love that at all. Darts are part of veils. That's a problem because we wanted to draw cards. Um, Sanctum of Vault does not draw cards, which is nice. Uh, if we draw an untapped land, we'll be able to play the Sanctum, which is pretty rad. Well, if not, we'll be able to play Sanctum of Calm Waters, but it's not going to do anything for us. Infinite Rage, however, can do, do something for us. I'll take that. I'll take that all day, er day. Let's go. Hunting of Infinite Rage. So Infinite Rage is able to deal damage to Narset, making her a lot less powerful uh, throughout the course of the game. So that's nice. I like that. I like that a lot, actually. And next turn, we'll be able to get the Sanctum Vault online. Now, I am mindful of our opponent playing counters because um, they are in blue. So that is a problem. Ooh, down, by down taking Narset, that means Narset is within range of Infinite Rage next turn. So that's pretty great. And I have to say it like that. I can't help it. They're going to tap out for a Shark Typhoon here. Dope. Pew, pew. Goodbye, Narset. Get out of here. Uh, I'm going to decline that so we don't get the scry, but that's fine. Whatever. Sanctum of all. There we go. Sanctum of all is now live and online. Our opponent's looking at it. They're being bombed because they didn't keep the counter up. Archmage's Charm would have made short work of that Sanctum Vault too. Too late now, Home Slice. All right, they're going to go for the aggro plan. Fair enough. Can't blame them. Tough Time Raveler. That can bounce our Sanctum of all. That sucks, frankly. That's just really, really bad for us. Um, except for the really, really, really bad part. I mean, except for the really bad for us. It's like really, really uber hella bad for us. Honda of Infinite Rage. Going to ping down Tef. Cleansing Fire is not bad, but we need to hit the, the Sanctum Vault again before they have an opportunity to bounce it again. And but while they're tapped out for the counters, yeah. And Tef Hero of Dominaria, of course, why not? So interestingly enough, our opponent just like tapped out to play all their stuff. But it's all pretty good stuff. So there's that. I think with Sanctum Vault, we need to go grab Sanctum of Stone Fangs. And Infinite Rage is going to kill T Tef Time Raveler. But yeah, this deck that we're going up against is a very strong deck. There's no question about it. Discontinuity. Oh, F you, opponent. <sighs> All right, game two. 
Sorry, let's just jam all the best Azorius control pieces together and just call it a day. Um, that's exactly what they just did. I'm just going to call it. I'm just going to run it out. But that's historic, baby. I don't mean to be upset. Historic happens. This is not a great matchup for us. The other thing I find really frustrating is our opponent didn't bother leaving up mana for counter spells any of those times, and we still couldn't capitalize on it. That was frustrating. Um, because when I see control players tapping out, usually that means that we have an opening. And in that game, we just didn't because they ramped so hard with Lotus Field. So they were tapping out, but they were tapping out for Shark Typhoon like on turn four. Like there's nothing we can do against that. That's just way too powerful. And the shrines don't answer enchantments uh, particularly well, you may have noticed. So that's something that we struggle with. Uh, I'm going to keep this. I'm going to keep this and potentially regret it. Temple of Mystery. I'm an island. I can work with that because that's going to give us a sanctum of fruitful harvest. I would have preferred that to be a forest, but, or a swamp, but what can you do? I can cry about it. All right. Ooh. Do we want to go Goshen type, Boundless Vigor, and go on the aggro plan, or do we? I think we go fruitful harvest and start ramping. At the end of the day, it, it, when debating between the two, well, it's a two drop that we could immediately used to pump itself so it's gonna be a black manias see does the sanctum stone fangs resolve if not we're gonna hit it we're gonna follow up with the gushing dive boundless vigor actually even if it does we're gonna follow up with the gushing dive boundless vigor now we may see like a a joy disruption or mana tithe very possible um or just a good old-fashioned arc major charm okay I mean that was one of our win cons, so that's fine. I I mean I can't blame him for that. That was that was a decent hit. So next turn, the Sanctum of Fruitful Harvest is gonna produce a red mana. Hey, go shit that mountain's figure. What up, dog? Happy to see you. We're gonna produce red mana, so we have access to the Sanctum of Shattered Heights or the Sanctum of Calm Waters. Calm Waters is definitely better in this, especially in this matchup. Um But you know what? I'm gonna see if I can bait the counter spell. Because they have, they have shown me that they are afraid of the Goshintai of Boundless Vigor. Let's see, does the Sanctum of Shattered Heights resolve? Sanctum of Shattered Heights is really just an additional shrine in this matchup. It doesn't do, give us much else, unfortunately. Because it's removal for creatures and... Well, it's removal for... Yeah, it can hit Planeswalkers. So, all right. Actually, you know what? No, it'll be okay. So they cycle the Shark Typhoon to get a flyer. Here comes Narset. The Parter of the Veils. And there's Lotus Field, naturally. Ooh, but they are going to sack the lands this time. Okay, cool. No strict proctor to be seen. They're going to tick up, or down tick, Narset. Into the Divine Purge. That's annoying. It's going to hit the Sanctum of Fruitful Harvest. The Sanctum of Stone Fangs. The Haunted of Infinite Rage, if we play it. Which, to be honest, I don't think we do. Um, do 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 Doodly do. I'm gonna go ahead and throw the Sanctum of Calm Waters. And I'm going to use one Manya to blow up Narset. And we're gonna discard the Sanctum of Fruitful Harvest because we've already got it. Boom. So Divine Purge is going to be a frustration for us. It is definitely gonna be an issue and I'm not gonna like it. Um, and they're gonna be able to hit it next turn, but you know what, just in case they don't, in case they decide to keep counter mana up, not that that's something that this player seems to like doing, um, I am gonna bounce, or I'm gonna buff the Goshen Tide Boundless Vigor. As long as Sanctum of Calm Waters can pop off, we're gonna be fine. So they could hit us with the Divine Purge here, which would suck on its, like, admittedly. Um, uh, they should do it. They should attack for one and then, ah, uh, they're gonna Teff instead. Okay, cool. Guess who's totally good with that? This guy, this guy's totally good with that. Pew, pew, saying from Shattered Heights, Blasting Tef. Boom, baby. Let's go. So we did have to say goodbye to the Haunted of Infinite Rage, but that's okay. We're going to get an opportunity to untap the Lotus Field, which is fine, frankly. Ting, ting, ting. Ping, ping with the side of ping. Did I mention the pings? Let's ping. And let's also draw all the cards. Let's go. Uh, I'm going to discard the Temple of Epiphany. This is going to create a red mania source. We're going to do that. 
Um, I'm going to throw the Goshintai of Ancient War because it has an opportunity, if it resolves, to just end the game on the spot, which is exactly what I want to do. Um, and I can also cast the Goshintai of Cruelty here, or the of Hidden Cruelty, I should say, uh, which I'm going to do. Because that's just an additional shrine, and I like my shrines, baby. That's what it's all about today. Bring on the shrines, baby. So let's see. How do they respond? Divine Purge is fortunately a sorcery. They're going to cycle the Typhoon. The Typhoon of Sharks. Actually, that's fine. That's perfectly fine. Go should die of Ancient Wars. Deals X damage to target player or planeswalker. Rex is the number of shrines you control. We have a whole mess of shrines. So we win this game. Then we move on to game three. Boom, boom, smack to the face. End of turn. Trigger, 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 trigger. Don't need that one. Do need this one. Ding, ding. Seven to the face. Let's go. Game three, baby. All right. Sanctum of Shattered Heights was an all-star. We're definitely adding more of those. There's no question about it. Um, Sanctum of Fruitful Harvest is pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and go down by two Chromatic Lanterns because I just... I find myself not wanting to play them. Um, but we still have all the shrines represented. At least one of every single one. It's feeling good, everybody. This is feeling real good. I'm telling you, shrines can do it all. They're decent against control. They're decent against aggro. It, it, depending on which shrines you get. Um, you know, the Sanctum of Shattered Heights was definitely the all-star there. Sh it, one, that one trigger off the Sanctum of Calm Waters was also clutch in order to fill our hand with the cards that we needed to, uh, to discard for the Sanctum of Shattered Heights. All right, sideboarding is over. Let's see what we can do in game three. Well, Orzlovat is still sideboarding. My opponent. Um, oh, yeah, he's still a, he's still sideboarding, but that's okay. Well, now we're done. Now we're in. Let's go. Uh, yeah. Oh, and that's right. We had we had uh, lost the coin flip slash die roll, whatever you want to call it. I think it's a mull. Uh, this is a keep. I'm with the sanctum of. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna let the Sanctum of All go. I'm a question who isn't that decision right away, but I feel like it's for the best. Yep, should have let the Sanctum of Calm Waters go. Not that we had any way of knowing that. This is gonna come down as a black source. We're gonna shock in the Temple Garden so the Sanctum of Stone Fangs can hit the ground running. Or hit a Jawari disruption. But that's okay. If that happens, it happens. But let's make him have it. You know, if they're going to hit it, they're going to hit it too hard. I hate it when I'm right. I hate it when I call that card because it feels bad every time. All right. Uh, Honda of Infinite Rage. Temple of Epiphany. Show me a land on top. You're not, a, you're not a land, but I really like you. So you're coming with me. All right. So Sanctum of Shattered Heights is the bomb diggity shiz. I love this card. It is incredibly potent, uh, especially in this matchup because our opponent's trying to get value off Planeswalkers. That said, I'm going to lead off with the Honda of Infinite Rage because I'm pretty sure it's going to eat a counterspell. And if it is going to eat a counterspell, well... I want to I wanna lose the one that's not so great. Uh, we have green, white. We have blue, red. Um... Infinite Rage. Counter. Archmage's Charm. Yep. Phenomenal card. Well, and we need the Sanctum of Calm Waters to pop as well. We need the Sanctum of Calm Waters and the, San and the Sanctum of Shattered Heights to, to hit. So. Uh, do they down tick tough to draw the card? Yeah, they do. Interesting. Okay. You do you, opponent. Don't let me tell you otherwise. Let's get the, we can get the Sanctum of Shattered Heights down, discard something and hit for one, which is kind of weak sauce. Uh, so let's get the Sanctum of Calm Waters down because it's the most important that we've got. Uptick Tef. I'm not playing anything at flash speed anyway, so Tef being around is like, is a big fat whatever. Um, lands would be good. Why not lands? Yes, lands would be good. Trick Proctor into a Lotus Field. Do they have the Lotus Field? Not this time. Let's go. Yes, I would love to draw a card. Please, thank you. Uh, Temple of Mystery. Cool. Discard the other Sanctum of Palm Waters. Play out the Temple. Trick Proctor. I'm not going to pay that. Sure, fine, whatever. Good work. 
Um, do do do. Saying Shattered Heights does it resolve? Nope, it does not. That is a hard no. Dovin's veto step in front of that like a boss. All right, nothing we can do about that. Yeah, and if that Sanctum Shattered Heist had resolved, Tef wouldn't be dead, but he'd be pretty buffed up, or roughed up. Uh, until next year, you make it, uh, return up to one target artifact creature enchantment. To they didn't bounce our Sanctum of Calm Waters. That was weird. I'm very surprised they didn't do that. They had no reason not to. They just chose not to, which is pretty cool. I'll take it. <laughs> uh, let the Temple of Mystery go. We're going to play out the Temple of Silence. Yeah, strict Proctor triggers. Sure, fine, whatever. Um, let's go Fruitful Harvest. Does it resolve? We're going up against an opponent who has four untapped lands and five cards in hand. So I was about to say it probably doesn't resolve, but now they have shown that they don't have a counter spell and now they're digging for one, which means we get to buff up our shrine. It's shrine time, baby. Let's go Shintai, Boundless Vigor. Let's go. We don't get to enjoy the trigger, unfortunately, because we did tap out for that. Totally worth it, though, because now we're going to be drawing three cards, discarding one off of the Sanctum of Calm Waters. We're going to be able to uh, generate three mana off the Sanctum of Fruitful Harvest. And Goshintai Boundless Figure is going to be able to buff the ever-loving snot out of itself, which is nice. And as long as we draw into a land or a shrine, which, because of the Sanctum of Calm Waters, we probably will, um, we're going to be able to throw the Sanctum of Shattered Heights and really rough up Tef, which is going to be nice. Because sometimes you just got to rough up Tef. Now, that was a pretty greedy attack there by our opponent, because now our, our Goshintai is going to be able to attack. Take action, draw those cards. Hot enough seeing wins. I can I'll discard the Sanctum of Calm Waters. It's gonna be great. make three blue. We're gonna play out the Forista. Gonna throw the Honda of Seeing Winds. Does this resolve? The amount of cards this is gonna be able to give us is disgusting, and I love it. Sanctum Shattered Heist, does this resolve? If it does, Teferi dies this turn. And that's exactly what's about to happen. Teferi's going to die this turn. Pew, pew. Unless they have a way to... Oh, they're going to just fade flaps and go shinto. Uh, and that means the Sanctum of uh, Shattered Heights actually resolves at four. Yep, because it checks how many shrines you have at the resolution of the spell. So Tef survives this round. But we are going to draw an obscene number of cards next turn unless they play out Narset. If they have a Narset, it's actually going to kick us in the teeth pretty hard. Um, if they don't, we're going to be fine. Dang it! I hate. Ah, uh, uh, I need to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> Woof. <coughs> All right, we're gonna draw one card off the Honda and Seeing Winds. It is a Sanctum. So before our Sanctum of Calm Waters is going to resolve, we're going to blast Narset. So hopefully we'll be able to draw some more here. Yeah, so that, that did shut down the Honden, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. But now we move on to our draw step. We draw for turn. Honden of Cleansing Fire. I'll take it. To the main phase. Onward to main phase. Ding, 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 ding. Honden of Infinite Rage. Happy to see you. I'm going to discard Shattered Heights here. Sanctum of Fruitful Harvest. I'm going to create Black Mana with you. We'll throw the swamp. We're gonna throw Hundred Cleansing Fire into an Archmage Charm in all likelihood, which frankly is fine by me. Archmage Charm, sure. We're gonna draw a card off the clue. Show me something good. You shouldn't have boundless vigor. I'm cool with that. So a big chunky Honda just bit it, which is not ideal, but not the end of the world. Mountain's Vigor. All right, we still have, and we're down to 34 cards, and we haven't seen a Sanctum Vol yet. They're gonna cycle the Shark Typhoon, sure, fine, whatever. Let's get Tef off the board. I'm gonna discard the, the Goshintai. So we still are looking for a Sanctum of All here. Um, 
Mission type boundless vigor is gonna trigger. Buff itself, ding ding, into a six six. That is gonna present a threat our opponent needs to figure out an answer for, and that's nice. I'm glad for that. Well, that's an answer. <laughs> All right, but they got, so we are on a three turn clock right now, which I don't love. We could discard the Hunt of Infinite Rage to blast the Strict Proctor and make it a significantly later. Yeah, let's do that. The more I talk about it, the more I like it. Let's do that. Because as before, unless they follow up with the Narset, we're gonna draw all the cards. And frankly, even if they do follow up with the Narset, as I showed, showed you on that last turn, as long as we draw into a land or a shrine, which we have like a 96% chance of hitting, especially since we sideboarded out the Chromatic Lantern, or two of the Chromatic Lanterns, um, chances are we're going to draw into something good. Cycling the Shark Typhoon again. If I were them, I would have just hard cast that there, but they want to keep mana open for a counter, which is understandable. I'm seeing wins. Give me those cards. Ding, 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 ding. Another chromatic lantern, draw for turn, sanctum of call water triggers, as does the sanctum of fruit harvest. There's the sanctum of all. Man, I've been looking for you. Uh, we're gonna discard the temple of the dragon queen. We have all of our colors represented, so I'll just say green. And if not, we can throw the world tree and just have them all represented anyway. Boom, sanctum of all resolves, let's go. All right, so we have three Manias available. Let's go Goshintai. Of Hidden Cruelty. This is gonna help us pick off those sharks. Cycle yet another Shark Typhoon, all right, all right. Magic Lantern into the mountain. Pew pew! And because Sanctum Vol Downs, we get double triggers. Pew pew! I'm gonna pick off those sharks, little sharky poos. Now we still don't have the Sanctum of. Sh and there comes Dark Side. All right, actually, you know what? We're down to 25 cards in our library and we got the Sanctum Vol online. We're fine. Now is a fine time for Narset. If anything is gonna prevent us from milling out because of the Haunted of Seeing Winds. So actually, Narset's doing us a favor at this point. So Sanctum Vol is gonna go grab Sanctum of Stone Fangs and I think we just straight up win. I could be wrong, I'm probably getting overly... Um, probably getting a little cocky here, let's see. How uh, do Dice Reach is fun, Goshen Time Ancient Wars is good. But Sanctum of Stone Fangs. Into another Sanctum Vol, sure, fine, whatever. Ding, 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 ding. Draw seven cards, I'ma decline that. Decline that as well. Sanctum Fruitful Harvest goes off. That's gonna be green. It's gonna be red, I guess. Hunting of Life's Web. Play out the World Tree, because we can. Get rid of Tef. Get rid of a shark. I'm gonna hold that one back. I'll tag with it because I can. Boom, baby. Let's also draw a card off this clue token because we can. Thank you for the fateful absence opponent. Oh yeah. <laughs> Narset, never mind, just kidding. I meant to do that. It was I'm I'm just BMing my opponent. That's that's right. Yeah, of course. No, pardon me, everybody. I'm sorry about that. I was just... That was a punt. Somebody punt me. All right, it's all good. These things happen. Good old Narset. Then we're down to 23 cards left in the library. Narset pulling up Jawar Disruption. That's not going to help him. That's not going to help him. We got the Shrine Voltron established. So a Divine Purge here would hurt, but it wouldn't be the end of the world. We wouldn't... It would... It would prevent us from just winning the game on the next turn. Um... Because otherwise, that's exactly what's about to happen. So, an, a board wipe that can hit enchantments would wreck us. But ding, 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 ding. All right. I believe discontinuity. Ah, okay. All right. Okay, man. Fair enough. 
This kind of nudity hurts us for sure, but it's it's delaying the inevitable at this point. That was a good way to buy a turn, though. I can give him that. This kind of nudity surprisingly strong card. Yeah, not bad. Memory Dailer's digging for something. I don't know what they're digging for. Let's see if they can find it. Probably for that purge. Yeah, Divine Purge would buy him a, lot, a fair amount of time. Actually, no, it won't because Sanctum of All isn't going to go, so we can just grab up our other copy of Sanctum of Stone Fangs. So, never mind, we'll be fine. Or the Goshintai of Ancient War. Either way, the game ends. Yeah, I think we got this. Unless they have a Planner Cleansing. Well, but actually, now they've tapped out. Got him. There it is. Good game. Shrines, baby. There we go. Going up against a mythic opponent. We hit the shrines. We're ranking up. We are climbing our way to mythic ourselves. Feels good. Let's move on to another game. All right, so we won the coin flip. We have three lands in hand. One of them's green. That all feels good. I think this is a keep. So we throw the Temple of Silence first. Temple of the Dragon Queen is going to make either red or blue, depending on how many cards we hit. And we're probably going to throw the Sanctum of Fruitful Harvest on three. This is probably the Temple is probably going to be red. Uh, Honden and Knight's Reach. Eh, my least favorite Honden. Chromatic Lantern, I'm not mad at that. I don't think we need it, though. I'd rather hit land. And Sanctum of Fruitful Harvest is going to be helpful here. Improbable Alliance. It's been a hot, hot minute since I've seen that card. All right, this is going to be red, so we can hit the Honden of Infinite Rage and the Goshintai of Ancient War. Let's go. Kadish Suzuki is going to draw them a second card. Actually, that's a pretty cool tack. I like it. They're going to draw then discard. So I think we throw the Hot of Infinite Rage so we can pick off these fairy tokens and the, that Planeswalker. So let's have Infinite Rage. We need to deal with these fairies. The next turn, we can throw the Hot of Knight's Reach so we can hate on their hand and actually get some decent value out of it potentially. Kaido into ah uh, they should have attacked first so they don't have to discard unless they want to fill their yard. I see black so they this could be a Grixis reanimator situation. And discarding spell pierce is interesting because that actually would hurt us pretty badly. Fiery uh, fire prophecy not so much. I'm just gonna go pick off one of those flyers. Sanctum of all, let's go. All right, uh, this I'm gonna shiggity shock in. <sighs> Sanctum Tranquil Light. Actually, knowing they're running Spell Pierce, I should've thrown the Sanctum Fruitful Harvest first. Oh, well. So they have four mana left in hand. They have three untapped land, one of which is blue. And they, the Water Grave they put in tapped. They're gonna counter it with the Mirror Shell Crab. Okay, all right, fair enough. Yeah, channeling the mirror shell crap is actually a pretty cool tech. I'm not even mad at that. Why aren't they attacking first? I'm really confused. Because if they attack first, Kaido's plus one is just draw a card. You don't have to discard. I'm a obstructionist. All right. I don't want them to act. I don't want them to ult Kaido. So that's gotta go. Hunden um, of Night's Reach could do good work for us, but I think the Goshen Dive Ancient War is more important. <laughs> Let's see what happens here. Is this another counter? Yep, they saw it coming. So this is um, Improbable Alliance Kaido Tempo. Interesting. Rile the Everwise. Okay, so them discarding cards is to to their benefit. It didn't have to be that whole time though. Now they learn. Now now they're picking it up on it. Or picking up on it. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Another Improbable Alliance. I really don't want Kaido's ultimate to hit. I really, really don't. Um, so this is a red mana source. World Tree's nice. I'm not mad at it, but I needed that to be blue. But Hunter and Night's Reach is going to mess up their hand, but with Rael down, they're going to be able to fill their yard, which I don't love. But we're going to be able to blast it with blast her with Honden of Infinite Rage, so it's fine. Yeah, I'm saying this is fine, but and I'm sipping here. I'm sitting here sipping coffee. I feel like that dog in the meme. This is fine. This is fine. 
All right, so they have to discard a bunch of cards. We're gonna blast Rael. Boom. Get her. Get her gone. Yeah, our start was just a little too slow, and theirs was a little too fast. The counter spells also really hurt us. If we had been, if we had an opportunity to set our shrines up earlier, we would have been okay, but we just didn't. Uh, Goshintai of Hidden Cruelty is actually pretty rad. Pick off one of the flyers. I'm pretty sure we're still dead here, but had to try. Yeah, they can. Oh, and then they up to Kaido and we're dead. Yep. Bummer, yo. Because the Iron Craig Pyromancer is going to trigger twice. All right. Game one was not our game. That's okay. Game one was not our game. We had some mana troubles. It's all good. Go shit. I've lost wisdom. You're my blocker. You're my blocker. Get in here. Um, Shattered Heights isn't bad. Don't love Night's Reach here. Um, uh, Hidden Cruelty is fine. It's not bad. Shared Purpose is kind of lame because all their threats are flyers. War's not bad. I do like that. And, uh, Hot of Infinite Rage, had we actually been able to hit it more frequently, would have been just fine. I'll go down to one Fruitful Harvest and one Chromatic Lantern. Let's try that. All right. <clears throat> yes, I'm sideboarding in the Shrines deck. This is this does happen. Playing first. Chromatic Lantern can get us out of some jams, so let's let's try it. I shouldn't have lost wisdom. Uh, yeah, actually that'll work. I can. I'm cool with that. Faceless looting naturally. Great card. It's just super powerful. Because they aren't pressuring our face yet, I'm going to throw the Temple of Silence into a forest. I'll take that all day, every day. There's the Improbable Alliance. Our opponent never didn't have it. All right, we're going to throw the Chromatic Lantern here. So next turn, we have Sanctum of All. That's actually pretty fantastic. Yeah, turn four Sanctum of All in this deck, unless they keep up counter spells, which it looks like they are going to do. So I'm going to throw the Forista, and we're going to throw the Honden of Infinite Rage in, straight into a counter spell. But if that spell is a spell pierce, we're going to... Well, they shock that in, though, so that's probably a three-mana hard counter. But if this does get countered, the Goshen Tide of Lost Wisdom is going to trigger. Yep, Mirror Shell Crab. All right, so Lost Wisdom is online. Probably should have done this in the opposite order, but that's okay. We can mill them out if we have to. Well, actually milling them out is probably a terrible idea. <laughs> Goshen Tide of Lost Wisdom can soak up some heat, though. Right, they're down to two. They're down to two lands. They have three cards in hand, one in Fortel. That's probably saw it coming. Here it is. They saw that coming. Of course they did. But it's cool. We have another Sanctum of All. All right, they're down to four cards. How do they respond here? They're going to play a Frantic Inventory, draw an additional card. They're down to two lands, three lands. Are they going to keep them all up? Do they have the counters? Apparently they do. All right. But you know what? I'm going to make him have it. Going for it. Oh, they did not. Let's go. I'm going to decline that. Sanctum of all sticks. Feels good. Feels real good. And that's going to grab the Sanctum of Calm Waters, and we're going to start drawing cards. Because we need cards. Our opponent needs cards. We need cards. Everybody needs cards. I'm so happy that stuck. I didn't expect it to, to be honest. Like, you know, sometimes you just got to make them have it. Uh, yeah. Sanctum of all. All right, it does trigger. Nimble Obstructionist. Oh, they're going to counter the Sanctum of all's ability. All right. Okay, man. I can respect that. Nimble Obstructionist doing some work. When you cycle it, counter target activator to trigger ability you don't control. Huh. I'll be darned. I'll be gall darned. And we have another Sanctum of All in case they do something with that. So that's something. More faithless looting. They're faithlessly looting. 
At this point, they should probably start attacking. Yeah, no reason not to. I'm going to prevent one of it. Do they have another obstructionist or the mirror shell crab? Actually, the mirror shell crab I can pay through. Nimble obstructionist I cannot. Zank of Calm Waters, Temple of the Dragon Queen, I'll take it. Draw three cards, discard one. Uh, nice reach is nice. First things first, let's throw that. It straight up doesn't matter. Um, let's go Life's Web. They want to go wide, let's go wide. It's probably going to get countered. Yeah. They're doing a lot of one for one counters right now. And to be honest, that's okay. They're under 35 cards, though. So actually, if we started milling them, we might be able to get them there. That's tempting. That's truly tempting. Also, Wisdom's blocking one. All right, let's go. Let's go, 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 Shintai. Sanctum of Stone Fangs is an awesome draw for us. We're definitely going to take action here. Draw into all the things. I'm going to discard a World Tree here because we just don't need it. Play at the Island, Sanctum. Into a Counterspell, potentially. But if it goes into a Counterspell, it's the last one they got. In which case, Haunted and Night's Reach is going to come in and just ravage their hand. Well, let's see Haunted and Night's Reach. Show me Haunted. Of Night's Reach. It sticks! Uh, you know what? I'm going to leave that up. Trigger, 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 tr trigger, tr trigger, trigger, trigger. They're going to frantic inventory here. Sure, fine, whatever. We're going to pay one for that Goshintai. We're going to pick off a fairy. Doink. And you know what? I am going to pay one to mill them. Let's start milling them out. Doink. All right. They're down to 24 cards left in the library. The Goshinta have lost wisdom might be our win count here. Because they are milling themselves really hard. Another improbable alliance. Sure, fine, whatever. I'm feeling good here. I think we've got game two in the books. And we are 25 minutes on the clock still. We're doing just fine. Gonna block one of these. I right, cool, whatever. Adam Knight's Reach is going to force them to dump their whole hand. Got them. Yep. All right. We got enough shrines going with the Sanctum of All. Never didn't have it. Let's go. I think we run it out. Run it back. Let's do it again. Let's do it live. All right. That was our game. Like that, that game worked perfectly. It did, we did exactly what we came here to do, and it worked. Which you love to see. Love to see it. So this is game three, everybody. We're doing this thing. I love a good game three. Love a good game three. Who doesn't love a good game three? Uh, this actually looks pretty keepable. I'm feeling, feeling pretty good about this, actually. Pretty darn good. Temple of Epiphany, Goshen Dive, Ancient Wars. Yeah, I'll take that. We're going to Chromatic Lantern and hopefully hit the Sanctum of All early. Assuming the Chromatic Lantern sticks, which is not a given at this point. Um, Temple of Silence. 100 seeing wins. That's a little too heavy for us. So I'm going to ship it. Uh, World Tree. We shouldn't have lost wisdom. Into a saw it coming. Show me saw it coming. Ooh, they let it stick. All right, cool. I'll take it. I'll take that all day, every day. Let's go. So here we go. They have four mana up. They have an opportunity to play an improbable alliance here. Oh, they play an Iron Craig Pyromancer, leaving only one back. That feels good. They might have a spell pierce here, which would be a little problematic, except for the a little part. It would actually be uber problematic. But let's make them have it. Um, this can be. Let's make it black. Um. 
Sanctum of Stone Fangs is pretty rad, but I want the Chromatic Lantern because that's going to allow us to hit the Sanctum of All, assuming it sticks. Spell Pierce? Show me Spell Pierce. I mean, I'd rather you didn't, but they probably have it. So, And there's the pause. There's a big old pause. They may have an opt. Actually, uh, yeah, opt or consider. Might be good. They might hit that here. Yeah, if they have the Spell Pierce, they probably would have jammed it by now. That's probably that is probably saw it coming. That's the only spell I've seen them foretell so far. What took them so long? They had it. <laughs> that must be. You know what? That's probably one of their. They're probably running low on counters. Also, I wonder what the black is for. Did I miss something earlier? Probably did. Fire prophecy. All right. Fair enough. Man, that's a lot of damage they put on that shrine. Boundless Vigor. Trying to beat the counter spell because I want the Sanctum of Stone Fangs to stick. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not mad if the Gushin type Boundless Vigor sticks. Now let's try the Sanctum of Stone Fangs. Do you resolve? Is that a saw coming? I knew it. That's okay though, because these are all threats that uh you know we're we're limiting their hand pretty pretty significantly, which feels pretty good. I'm gonna throw the chromatic lantern here. If they have a counter spell, I'm gonna make them spend it, because if not, Sanctum of All is gonna trigger next turn. This also allows us to buff up the Goshen Dive Boundless Figure with that extra mana we have with the extra mana that we have lying around. So that's nice, I'll take it. Ding ding. Nice little two-two trample. Nothing wrong with that. They have a zero-four body, but still, two-two trample. It's not bad. Uh, face looting. Well, our 2 2 body's about to bite it pretty fiercely. And uh, they're discarding lands very quickly, which means they, well, they might have something in hand now, but they didn't before, it looks like. Temple of the Dragon Queen. Nothing wrong with that. This is going to be. Let's see. That's black, green. This will be white, red. I'm going to make it. Well, I'll make this red, because that can also be blue. Uh... Infinite Rage? question mark I don't want to just jam the sanctum of all because the sanctum of all is going to be really important for us I'm going to pay through the spell pierce if they have another one so be it I didn't have anything to use that two mana for anyway let's go I don't know if they didn't see the chromatic lantern they may not have realized the chromatic lantern taps for mana that's possible there um, that's a mistake I've made before where I just don't count it yeah truly possible pew pew a little one damage to the face I'll take it I'm going to throw another Chromatic Lantern. That one resolves. Gushin Tai of Ancient Wars. Do you resolve? It's one mana up. That'd be nice. Yeah, let's go. Thrill of Possibility. Yeah, I don't care. is just going to pick this sucker off. Oh, well, it was fun while it lasted. So, game, what you're telling me is I should have played the Sanctum of All when I had the chance. I just didn't know I had the chance. And now they may have a counter spell in hand. I'm gonna hit him with a Honda of Infinite Rage. Goshindai of Hidden Cruelty is a death toucher. That's pretty rad. You know what? I'm just gonna try it. Sanctum of All. I may have just bungled this hard. There's a delay. They have three mana open, two of which is blue. This could be bad. Mirror Shell Crab. Yep, that's a problem. That'll do. Bummer, yo. Bummer, yo. So yes, I misplayed that. Well, not I. Given the information I had, I stand by my decisions, but it did not end up well. It, it actually turned out quite poorly for us. Um, this can be any color. It really doesn't matter at this point. We only have two shrines, so we don't have an opportunity to kill anything, unfortunately. <sighs> Except the Goshintai, which is way not happening. They're going to fire prophecy that and swing in for a lot of damage. Uh, they're going to be able to deal four to our face here. This puts us down to one. If they have anything that can deal one more damage or put another instant or sorcery in the graveyard, we're dead. Yeah. Pew, pew. Yeah, we just weren't able to set this up on game three, unfortunately. Shouldn't have hidden cruelty again. Yeah. 
As it turns out, I should have jammed, um, I should have jammed the Sanctum of All sooner. I had no way of knowing that, but I should have. Yeah. I should have, well, in game two, when everything just came up Millhouse and we were able to pull it off, I said, let's make them have it. And I jammed the Sanctum of All at a time that it looked like it was a little sketchy and they didn't have it. There was a time earlier in this game when they didn't have it and had I jammed, jammed the Sanctum of All, we would have been fine. But I didn't. I played more conservatively, and as a result, they were able to pick us off. Um, it's good to know. Thank you so much for checking out the video, and if you enjoyed that one, please take a look at this playlist right here for more deck techs just like it.